Hey, welcome back to the channel. So it's time for my first War of the Four Loki. And I, you know, I've been playing at Masters for quite a long time and it felt so cool because I was nervous. I'm talking thumbs were tight, palms were sweaty, made a fight significantly harder than it needed to be uh, type of nervous. And it was just fun. We had the first fight was the strike counter. Um, you saw there were against Silver Surfer, then another one versus an R3 Sasquatch, followed up by Chitinous, Venom, that node and me, are like peanut butter and jelly, and then uh, Explosive Personality Quake. And then, you know, I, I saw some amazing fights from a couple buddies, asked if we could use them, they said sure. JT with a pretty incredible takedown of an Ebb and Flow Hit Monkey, DLL reminding us of how to take a Lionheart with Human Torch, I think it's a nice thing to see. And then an exquisite, exquisite showcase here with Killmonger taking on Polka Dot uh, Power, Stunning Reflection, MODOK. All right, let's get to the show. All right, let's get into it. So this first fight was this uh, Strike Counter Fury, Power Struggle, Silver Surfer. I am not used to these nodes at all. I think they're pretty complex. I actually do not like the design of them. And a lot of that probably has to do with me just being very new to it. I received detailed, detailed directions on how to take this node and they came in and saved me. I think this fight is a great example of one of the things we talked about quite a bit on this channel of, you, you know, it's great to have a plan, Try to stick to your plan, but there's a really good chance something is going to go wrong. And it's how you handle that thing going wrong. You can stay calm. You can remember you have a plan. Chances are your BG leader, your alliance leader, that's what I'm very used to, has put in a tremendous amount of thought and has set you up with a very good option on how to take this fight. And if you can remain calm, you're probably going to figure it out once that thing goes wrong. So uh, one of the big issues for me is that I wasn't going to be able to do the normal doom cycle. I'm just so used to that. And there was a specific amount of hits I was supposed to do. It was medium, light, light, heavy, airy, medium, light, light, medium. And I wanted to make sure I did not push him into a bar of power unless I was comboing so that I could immediately throw my SP1. You're going to see if I haven't already messed up, I messed up. No, this wasn't my mess up. I may have already done it, and then I realized I messed up. And then I'm going to take a combo to the face. See, I, I took a little hit there. And, uh, you know, I was looking down at my notes, and maybe I already missed what I missed up. The uh, So, yeah, I think I have. But I just uh, I took a combo to the face because I'm getting a little worried here. I'm very nervous. I definitely don't want to die on my first fight. They were going up against ASR, tremendous alliance, great players. And now I'm freaking out, and I'm, I am down on health. Because I messed up uh, the combos, he has 10 Furies. He is hitting very hard. And I thought, okay, what's the plan here? The plan was I'm supposed to push him over a bar of power with my combo. I calmed down. I got it done there. And then I was like, I'm going to have to try to evade some of these specials. Thankfully, Doom is incredibly tanky. That's part of why I love him. It's why he's my favorite, maybe, character in the game. And I just remembered my plan. The plan was get him close to a bar of power. It doesn't have to be the SP1 that would have been preferable, but you know, it worked out the way it did. Here we go. I'm evading those SP1s. To, uh, ideal, I wouldn't love to have to do that to save my life, but it is what it is. Fortunately, I knew how to do that. Coming in, I'm pushing him over those bars of power when I can. Here we go. We're going to have the same thing here. And then I'm going to push him over his bar of power. And then the other great advice I got, and I remembered this too, was, you know, I'm going to bait his heavy and then he's going to face. So I don't want to go in and attack that immediately. Fortunately, that stuck with me too. And I was able to remember that and I baited his heavy. And then there was another time in that fight where I think I forgot to go in and punish after the second one, but that was okay. The whole point wasn't that I had to punish the second one. The whole point was that I didn't go in and rush in after the first one when he was phased. So it's really important there. I did my duels. It's really important there that you think about the directions you've been giving and then how to apply them. That way, when the mistake is made, you can adjust. I know there was a lot there in that fight, uh, a lot of information. I know I felt a little bit overwhelmed, um, but hopefully you learned a little something there. And, and I have a feeling I might be taking that note again after they've seen this fight. Maybe they'll be like, okay, let's not give that fight to Vega. 
But uh, so I calmed down. I definitely adrenaline was running. So I took some time off. I took a, about three or four or five minutes to just kind of dry my palms, stretch out my thumbs. Uh, I was just really happy that I boost big and that I had doom. And then I came in for this fight. And, you know, I know how to evade that special, but I didn't even try it. And this this is coming from a guy who has an R3 Sasquatch. That's that's just very clear that I did not calm down enough. I was still nervous. Um, and. And I remember it specifically, I couldn't remember why I got stunned. I was just like, that's weird. And if you see, I didn't fully evade that one too, that he does have that small chance. And, but I did know that when he has the Wrath of Tanarak, I want to make sure I evade those. So I, I evaded the second one, uh, that third one actually, while he was in the Wrath of Tanarak. I had accidentally sent him indestructible, but I knew I had my SP1, which I'm supposed to be throwing anyway. And so I just I, uh, stepped back immediately throw the SP-1. He was at such a low amount of health and we got that fight done. So that's just another example of excellent planning. They sent me in there with uh, an overpowered option for the fight and we utilized it. So again, here we are with Kiteness. At least it's not Colossus, right? I mean, that's cool. And I definitely think there's something to learn here from, from this fight too, is I got too comfortable just trying to parry heavy. Now, uh, Venom is not metal, so he's not magnetized. The The stuns were lasting quite a while. I have a feeling that um, this player doesn't have many points in limber, if any at all. So the stuns were lasting quite a while, and, and I, want, I did pay attention to that, and I got used to that. Uh, I've sent him indestructible, and, you know, Venom typically has a very aggressive AI. He was willing to throw his SP-1 here, but if I remember correctly, he's a little bit lighter, uh, lighter a little bit later into the fight he's gonna he's gonna like decide he doesn't want to throw it and so what's happening here because i'm not doing many combos and i'm starting to notice this and i'm starting to correct is that i'm getting moved to my side of the map and i really don't want to do that um you know i don't want to do anything that could jeopardize a fight especially a simple fight like this right you know i i'm i've been very fortunate to play with extremely good players and they're taking these incredibly hard fights and not that there's any easy fights in in war and as you see that was it venom did not want to throw his sp1 we're backed up and then he went in for a three hit combo fortunately i was able to react well enough and evade all of those he then threw the sp1 uh sp1 and i just chose not even to try to i just you know a couple blocked hits not a big deal as I said, one of the reasons I love Doom is he's so tanky. Magneto also is tanky. Um, they're perfect, I think, for any player, but a uh, even more for me. You see here, I took a hit. I uh, And a commenter commented on this, and I thought it was such a great comment, is they said, you know, one of the things I'm learning from your war fights is it's not that bad to take a little bit of, uh, a little bit of block damage. And I couldn't agree more, and I appreciate them saying that because that's been one of the things I've been trying to get out there is... You know, I could have just taken the blocked hit there. The SP2 on Venom, I know how to do it. It's still really hard. And I'd say I'm about 50-50. I didn't need to do that. And, uh, you know, uh, Magneto's tanky, as we said. The fight was already almost won. And all it really did was it costed me some potions because I, I knew I was going to heal up big. Uh, to go against this Quake. And this Quake, again, is not going to be a perfect fight. I, I know, and I definitely was still nervous, uh, you know, wanting to try to make a good first impression and and not die, um, especially on fights like this, going back now, when there's guys and, 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 uh, and ladies taking some incredibly, incredibly difficult fights. So, uh, you know, the least I can do is boost big. I can clear my lane as one of the top alliances, war alliances, in the game and I just want to, you know, I want to be an asset. So um, Quake has decided she does not want to throw her special. I, I felt like Venom did the same thing. I probably was not being aggressive enough and I, I kind of made the same mistake. They're just relying on that heavy, right? You know, as we've talked about, if I'm trying to entice them to throw their special, it's really smart to go in and just shorten my combo, pull back out. And, you know, I could have done that a better job here. Quake's SP2 is not too bad to evade. I really definitely know how to do it. I got, uh, the statistically, I wasn't that lucky that I didn't get stunned after the that SP1, but it's still not a good idea. You know, you don't want to have to rely on that. Um, Magneto being tanky, as we talked about, I'm sure he would have survived, but we got the SP3 and we get the massive, the massive uh, bleed damage off of it. 
Overall, I was very happy with myself. I was happy because the ultimate principles that I've been trying to talk about uh, were there. And uh, oh, let's talk about this really quick. So I like to put resources into defense. That's a big thing. I enjoy that. Like I said, I'd like to be an asset to the alliance I'm in. All right, let's take a look at these fights. These are impressive. Very, very impressive. This first fight is from JT, uh, and the second one will be from DLL. They're both in SX1. Shown them quite a few times. This is a master tier alliance, and I've been playing with these guys, alongside these guys, for absolutely for years. This is an ebb and flow against Hitmonkey, a very tricky defender. When he gets knocked down, he's going to trigger both of his uh, stances, let's call them, uh, the Assassin's Cunning and uh and the primal rage <clears throat> which will give him the ability to um shrug a debuff and then and then there is a high high evade chance we've seen this fight taken before with magic and it it can turn out really well but uh, i talked with jt he sent me a lot of his notes and he said you know i have magic jt is an excellent magic player and he said just wasn't totally comfortable because i'm going to be wanting to apply the power control and then he's going to have that high evade chance and this is war want to make sure I get this solo. Uh, I'm not I'm not extremely comfortable with his SP2. I know I can't evade his SP2. I very much still even struggle with that SP1. So JT brought in his Doom, his highest ranked champion that he had on his team. He's in, and this is very difficult. We just saw this earlier. He's not using all of the usual Doom cycle. He's doing an excellent job of baiting that SP1. He's throwing the SP3, and this was interesting and that it seemed like it did not trigger all of, of hit monkeys uh the assassin's cutting and the primal rage then he's doing a great job of baiting these sp1s over and over you see how well he has down the evade and he's also giving him a chance to wait out the timing on that uh primal rage and the assassin's cunning so jt can then go in and punish as you're seeing without fear of the evade happening here we see it again so he's going to be able to go in and hit hit monkey not be concerned about uh, any potential evades. As we've talked about on these nodes, uh, I think it's it's great and it's smart to take your time. You know, the uh, you have five minutes, the protection does remove or mitigate quite a bit of damage, but I think we're about a minute and a half into the fight, Hit Monkey's down to 34%, JT is in control. And, you know, for those of us <laughs> who, all of us, Look at the health bar that JT still has. That was awesome. That was excellent. Thank you for submitting that, JT. Uh, I've traditionally shown that with magic, which can work, but I definitely see your point. I tend to be uh, a bit more on the safe side with War 2, and that was awesome to see it taken with Doom and the way that Doom can control that fight as well, even without doing the Doom cycle. I wanted to show this fight from DLL. Because, uh, you know, just as a, a reminder for folks, right, we all know that a Human Torch can reverse healing, but this is against Lionheart, where you're going to pay a pretty big uh, penalty for doing that with the debuffs, right, uh, from uh, Human Torch's Incinerates. So you use the pre-fight ability, which then gives you the passive um, damage over time, but it's not a debuff, so it's not going to trigger Lionheart. And you'll see how quickly that works. DL is also doing a nice job here of blocking that SP1 from Sentinel, which will um, increase his temperature if that's needed, and, but then also help build the smolders. Um, and, you know, we went through that hit monkey fight so fast. It was incredibly impressive. And I think uh, one of the things I really wanted to point out was that JT went through and he did his duels. He even showed them to me. He looked at the fight with Quake and saw that when he evades, it was going to trigger um, hit monkeys. I think it was the Assassin's Cunning. It was one of the two. And then that was going to be a real negative. He did it with magic. He just didn't like that the how frequently that meant that hit monkey would maybe be evading. And he settled on Doom and he went with it. So it's having a plan and sticking with it. Now, this is an exquisite showcase of what Killmonger can do. It's just another reason why I love Killmonger. This is with the stunning reflection and the polka dot power. DL is obviously not gonna be applying poison or incinerate, so he's gonna to have to play around the, uh, the stunning reflection here. He told me his game plan, he was gonna be hitting into Modok's block as best as he can or as frequently as he can, and that's fine because he's going to be using Modok's SP1 to trigger his true strike ability. You see it happening here. And he's just going to be working on that over and over. You can see the amount of damage that Killmonger is able to do. 
DL told me that if he had anything that he would improve on this fight, meaning you know, a way to either make it more efficient or to uh, continue on and have more of his health, maybe take less block damage, because what he can't stun, he can't stun uh, Modok. So what's happening here is he's often using, you'll see, he's using the charges from his SP1 to go unstoppable and punish Modok, or he's just taking blocked hits to bait the heavy, as we see right here. He's going and punishing it. He knows that he made Modok indestructible. That's fine because what he's really doing is he's looking to get Modok to his SP1. He's then going to punish that. And so what he said is the way he thinks he could improve this fight and if he takes it in the future, what he'll do is he's going to work on parrying the uh, SP1 from Modok to build up his, I think it's they're called destructible charges. It has to deal with the global node. And if he does that, that means that uh, Modok will not be going indestructible. Um, and then he'll be able to just punish that SP1 and uh, there'll be so there'll be less time with Modok indestructible, meaning he's going to DLL will be doing more damage. And by virtue of that happening, there will be less block damage. So uh, there's a lot of steps, a lot of logic, but if you followed it, it makes a ton of sense. And um, I mean, this is great. This is a very difficult fight. You know, this is a, a more or less a stun immune. Uh, Modok that has the ability to go indestructible uh, when you've evaded. So I think this is another great showcase of what Killmonger can do. I really appreciate uh, DLL sending this in. I, I know I'm impressed and thank you to JT and to DLL for showing in, uh, sending in some fights that are, I think are both very unique and highlighting either a champion like Killmonger, who I think is underloved. I think he deserves more love. Um, or a champion like Doom being played in a way that's not what we're used to seeing. And you saw how much I struggled with that in my fight with Surfer. So, and that's how we do it. You know, you, you come up with your plan, you do your duels, and then you get in there. And, and DL even had one, he, it wasn't a mistake, but he pushed um, Modok to, I think it was the SP2, but then that gave DLL to come in, uh, the ability to come in and do more damage. And I think Dale even threw one of his SP2s. And as he said, you know, that gave me the chance to do more damage. So, you know, things are going to get a little bit off, but you can correct. Um, and if you remember your plan and stay calm, you end up with fights that look just like that. So unfortunately, uh, we did end up losing the war. We lost ASR there. You know, there, there's no shame in that. They're an excellent uh, alliance, excellent players, excellent war alliance. But I always like to take a moment to shout out uh, the MVPs on, on my alliance. So Amir, he, you know, took so many fights in SB2. Lizer, incredible player. I think her war video will be out. It's it's impressive. There's a really unfortunate um, bug in there and you'll see it, but she is an excellent player and her war videos always impress me. And then I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, I'm sure. Uh, but I asked some people and it seems like no one's totally positive. And uh, Sire with, who uh, is a great uh, BG leader, I believe, and leader. And so great job all. I'm so happy to be there and uh, can't wait for the next war. Take care. I hope you either learned something we're entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow on Twitter at VegaGaming583. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.